Hey, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I created and composited this uh, effect and after effects using Make Big Films Explosion Assets. Uh, you should go check them out. Really good assets for pretty much anything you need. But uh, let's just get straight into it. The first thing I did was 3D track the scene and then create the solid so that we had the position data to paste the assets on from there. So this would always be the first step if you have anything moving. So once our 3D track was done, I took the assets that I wanted to, specifically two of them that I found on the website for a bird's eye view and started placing them where I seem fit inside of the scene. And because I shot in log, typically what I do is I pull back the levels, bringing back the blacks and the whites, trying to match those highlights, the contrast and the shadows with the scene that I'm using it for. And this just depends on if, you, if you're if you blending it with something that's in Rec 709 or in log flat footage. The second thing I did was add a tritone effect. And then I usually sample the midtones from something like the ground. And then I play with the blend with the original setting on it just to make sure that I have a fine mix in between the two. And this usually helps blend it a lot better into the scene. So this is another trick. So to bring in the next asset, there's actually a cool little trick that I learned. And if you duplicate that layer and you hold option and select the other layer and drag and drop it over that, it not only replaces it, but it inherits all of the settings from the last one. That being if it's a 3D track and alpha, the effects and everything else. And just this just makes it easier to actually adjust it because typically a lot of the settings you're going to put on that one thing will apply to the next. Now, once I brought in that explosion layer, it was a bit too saturated for the log footage. So I just added a hue and saturation effect and pulled it down to minus 60. But you can also do this with the tint effect. It just depends on what you're doing. From there, I played it a few times to see if it matched and fit in properly. And I kind of liked the look of it. So I wanted to move on to the next step and try and do something a little more creative. So add a time remapping effect and then add a keyframe somewhere in the middle or the area where you want it to go in slow motion and then the end keyframes pull them out further so that we can have this gradually go into slow motion you can also go into your graph editor and then tweak it around a bit just to make sure that it's going into slow motion at the speed that you want to but this just always depends on what you're trying to accomplish so just figure out what works for the scene you're doing and then kind of go from there i wanted to stylize it a bit more so i added the deep glow effect to the explosion layer and I wanted to isolate just where the luminance was so I just changed the threshold and then adjusted it until I had more of those highlights showing and then we changed the radius which is pretty much the spread of the glow to kind of bleed out more into the image to look like it covers the assets and then I played it back a few times just to see if it was fitting for what I was trying to do and I thought it looked pretty good so I thought it was time to move on to the next step. So if a bomb went off, typically you'd see some kind of distortion spreading out. So to do that, we created a new pre-comp and inside of there, we created a solid. Then you want to create a mask, duplicate that mask and change the second one to subtract. Now we're just going to play with the feather values to make sure it bleeds out a bit. And then we're going to add a keyframe to the expansion. And then we're just going to make sure that we have something that looks like a ring so that we can actually see visibly what it looks like at the start. So what you're going to be doing essentially is creating a keyframe at the beginning where the expansion completely closes that mask. And at the end of the clip, you want to keyframe the expansion to completely leave the frame. So once you're happy with the distortion you created, go back into the main comp that we did our explosion and everything in, and then bring in that pre-comp where we are creating the displacement map, disable it, add a displacement map to it and change the value and this is what's going to help displace the background to make it look like a shock wave is coming out this is a neat little trick and you can use it on a lot of things and from there i just went into my layer back and forth and kept tweaking it until i found something that looked good especially for the timing of me putting it into slow motion i wanted to make it look like something hit the floor to initiate the explosion so to do that i added an optical flares to a black solid we put it into screen blending mode and then changed it to a 3d layer so that we can get the z position then i just keyframed the z position to come from outside of the camera and make it look like it went through space to hit the floor to initiate that explosion i also wanted to create a flash to make it look like there was a bright light that happened because light would usually emit from an explosion so i added an adjustment layer and put optical 
beautiful glow on top of it and keyframe some values from the start to the finish to make it look like the light lit up the scene before the explosion actually took place behind it. Small things like this is what helps sell your visual effects and make it look like it's more integrated into the scene. After this was all done, I pre-comped it all together and this is usually where I add my shake. My favorite one is Production Creates Shake Script. I went to Jolt 3 and then changed around the values a tad bit to find something I thought would fit what an explosion would look like. And from here, it was really a matter of just color grading the scene to make it look like everything blended together better. I started with curves, then I used the conversion LUT so that I can bring it back into the right color space, a creative one on top of that, and then I used my personal favorite, which is Magic Bullet Looks. If you guys do not have the Red Giant Suite, I can't suggest it enough. They got great stuff in there for creatives. Otherwise than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or you wanna try something, message me down below and I'll even send you some raw footage so that you can try something out yourself. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.